Hello everybody and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. Today we're on part 23 of the Rook Endgame course and we're going to start with this position where it looks relatively simple um, but actually white can have some trouble trying to promote this pawn. If you want to set up the position I would encourage you to do that and try to solve it yourself as black to move and white to move. We're going to start with black to move here. So at first glance it looks like there has to be some way for white if he's on the move to just try to promote um, but actually the king supporting this rook against this pawn uh, especially with the pawn in front of or especially with the rook in front of white's pawn trying to get to the eighth rank it's quite difficult and technically uh, perfect with perfect play black would draw this if it's white to move now the reason for that is that the rook wants to come to h1 and check the king away from the f7 and f8 square. The problem with that is that black can take if he does that. So if the king moves away or the rook moves away, then he'll take the pawn. So white needs to be able to check the king on the 6th rank, not the 7th rank. And let's see the line here. So if the rook comes here and king plays to e7, if we try the idea... Obviously, um, it's a draw because they'll just shuffle back and forth. But if white tries the idea, for example, of bringing a uh, rook here, then if the rook takes f7, we check, and the king can get behind his rook, and he doesn't lose it. And now if white tries to, for example, let's come over here. If he tries to play rook to a8 and, you know, get a mate or something, uh, or just trade the rook when the rook, then black can just check the white king in perpetuity, um, or he can also just try to interpose upon the check. So this is basically a forced draw, and um, if we if white tries to bring his king in, then we'll see the pawn get taken. If he tries to step back, then again the pawn gets taken, and as I said here, he goes back. So the Basically, white would just shuffle his rook back and forth and accept the draw. All right, so let's move on to the more interesting scenario if it is white or black to move. So in this position, if it's black to move, actually that um, extra move give white, gives white a chance to bring his rook to h1. So rook to h1, and now he's on the sixth rank, so he can be chased away from his rook. If rook takes, rook check. And now all of a sudden he loses his rook and the game's over. Now if he doesn't take, if he doesn't take on f7 and we see something like rook to a8, then this wins immediately. Um, there's various tries like trying to pin the pawn um, or bringing the king in. But after uh, rook to f1, check on e1, chasing the king away then that just wins immediately. Or if we go back a few moves, if the rook tries to pin, then we also see here, and then the king can come in and either just promote immediately or even interpose and get a queen. So the reason that white was able to do that is because the king is on the sixth rank. So this is the important point, not necessarily these moves here, but the important point is that if you want your king on a bishop file to support your pawn in promotion with only rooks, then you really want your rook to be able to get either here without um, the king being on the seventh rank, or basically anywhere. Uh, but you don't want the rook in front and then your rook basically shuffling back and forth. That's the position that'll lead to a draw. So that's why we're covering this specific position and why it's important. <laughs> Um, you really need to know these uh, situations if you want to prevent uh, a drawn position from becoming a loss or a one position from becoming a draw. So I hope this was clear enough. If you have any questions or you have any further lines that you analyzed yourself, uh, please post those in the comments below. And I'll see you in part 24 of the Endgame series. Have a good day. Bye. Thank <music> you.